Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, hello everyone and welcome back to ECS 2210. Uh, this week we will discuss diodes. Uh, we're going to talk about different kind of diode models and uh, we're going to focus on uh, which one of these models are going to be used and it's going to be useful for our circuit analysis. We, all, we will also solve uh, several different circuits that involve diodes so that we understand how to deal with uh, this semiconductor device is the first semiconductor device that we learn in this course in a circuit analysis context. Okay, so in the last lecture, we started talking about semiconductor materials such as um, silicon and germanium. Uh, we learned about their properties. We learned about uh, the fact that they're all group four uh, kind of elements. Then uh, we learned about different kind of uh, charge carriers. We knew about electrons. We learned that there's something else called holes. Both of these could actually contribute into currents and to contribute into there. They are charge carriers, so they they carry charge, and as they move, uh, we have a sense of current. We also learned about different kind of carrier transport in semiconductors. We learned about drift, and we learned about diffusion and we saw that how they're different in nature but they both contribute into um, having a current in a semiconductor material um, next we started talking about um, a pn junction we kind of joined a p-type material and an n-type material by the way we learned also about so before drift and diffusion we learned about doping we learned about p-type and n-type material we learned that if I inject a group 5 kind of an element, such as phosphorus, into my silicon crystal, I'm going to have a p-type material, which is going to have electrons as the majority uh, carriers. And uh, if I inject um, a group 3 kind of an element, such as boron, I'm going to have a p-type material which in which holes are uh, the majority carriers and electrons are minority carriers. So. We learned that if I connect the p-type material and the n-type material together um, through some sort of a process that we don't care about it in this course, uh, what happens is that I'm going to have some drift and diffusion currents, and in the end, I'm going to have a region in the middle where the two types of materials are joined, uh, which is called depletion region. In this region, I'm going to have a bunch of ions that Basically, um, they, they don't have any kind of uh, free carriers, free electrons or free holes. So that's why I call it depletion region because it's depleted region because it's depleted of free carriers. Okay. And then um, we did a little bit of math. We, we well, first we talked about like basically how this depletion region is actually created. Um, and we realized that it's basically created because the diffusion and drift forces kind of cancel each other at some point. They become uh, equally strong to cancel each other. And that, that situation, we called it equilibrium. And we learned that at that point, there's going to be some voltage across this depletion region. We called it V0, and we actually calculated V0, right? We calculated V0 based on different kind of, and we, we realize it's, it's, it, is, it actually depends on um, the type of material, the doping of the P-type and N-type, and so many other parameters. Uh, we did a little bit of math, and we realized this V0 is somewhere between 0.7 to 0.8 volts, so 700 to 800 millivolts. And this is, this, it works kind of like a barrier for current conduction, meaning that as long as we have this depletion region, as long as we are in equilibrium, there's not going to be any current because, well, we have the depletion region because different types of currents cancel each other. So there's no electrons or holes moving from right to left or left to right. So zero current, right? And that is when we are at this point, right? So if this VD is, this is the voltage across the diode and it is really, if I call here, Vp and here Vn, it's basically Vp minus Vn. So when the two sides have the same voltage, I'm not going to have any current flowing either way. 
then we learn, we learn that if I increase Vn with respect to Vp, meaning that I keep Vp the same but increase Vn, or if I decrease Vp and increase Vn. In any way, if Vn was greater than Vp, I learned that I'm going to call this reverse bias. Okay, and what it ha what what it does is that we learned that it just makes the depletion region thicker and thicker, or wider and wider. Meaning that in terms of current conduction, nothing really interesting happens. But uh, well, I'm gonna have uh, basically a different kind of capacitance. We talked about that this diode in the in the reverse bias and in the equilibrium kind of works like a capacitance because it has two conductive material or semi-conducting material on the two sides and a depleted uh, of and a region in the middle that is depleted of uh, free carriers so kind of like an isolator right so it is a capacitance and as I'm making the uh, the width of this uh, depletion region wider or narrower I'm changing that capacitance okay but in terms of current conduction in terms of diode operation reverse bias meant that I'm not going to have any current. Later on, we realized that, well, I'm going to have a little bit of current. This, car, this current, I called it reverse saturation current. And we said that it's in the order of uh, 10 to the negative 9, in the, in the order of nanoamps. And it, it, of course, it changes with the size of the diodes and the material and many other things. but you can think about it if the normal currents that we are talking about are in the order of milliamps, this one is in the order of nanoamps. So a million times smaller, that's why we say, well, there's no current. Okay. Um, the other situation was if I increase Vp and decrease Vn or keep Vn constant, if Vp is greater than Vn, I call that forward bias. And we realize that, well, what, what happens is that when I increase Vp and decrease Vn, uh, I'm actually making this depletion region narrower and narrower. And at a certain point, when the Vp minus Vn is actually re has reached this voltage, this barrier voltage, it means that the barrier is fully lifted, meaning that, well, the, uh, the charge carriers can actually travel without any kind of resistance. Uh, or any kind of force against them. So uh, basically we can say that uh, at when we have forward bias, which is this side of the chart that we have on the, the right side of the uh, x-axis. So here is the forward bias. And if I want to use the same color for the as the above, uh, here is the reverse bias. So when we have a forward bias, you can see that the current is actually going up and it's going up. We realize that it's going up exponentially. And so like it, it doesn't basically for the current, it doesn't actually need the barrier to be fully lifted to have a current. The moment that we decrease the barrier from its original value, which is this guy, uh, we're going to have a little bit of current. And you can see that the moment my VD is a little bit greater than zero, I'm going to start having current, but then this current doesn't become uh, really significant until we actually reach this V0, right? And the reason is, well, you can think of it mathematically from here. So in the beginning, when you have a little bit of VD, this exponential is basically, well, it has some value, but it's not like basically um, as, as good as it should be. But then the moment that this VD becomes greater and greater and greater. Uh, since this is exp this is an exponential function, after a certain time, this this term becomes so big that basically my current is actually in increases really fast. Uh, we also talked about the fact that if VD, so if VD is greater than four thermal voltage Vt, which was 26 millivolts, if you remember, um, we can actually approximate this exponential term with the simplest form of it, which is this guy. Okay, so um, since this PN junction only allows current 
uh, going in one direction from P to N, and it's only when uh, basically the P side has a higher potential than the N side, uh, we said that the symbol is, looks like something like this. So it's basically this triangle here is trying to basically tell us that the current is actually moving in this direction. So the anode side is actually the P-type side, and the cathode side is the N-type side. So this, this diode, if I want to say how the forward bias look like, looks like, so for a forward bias, the diode should be connected something like this. So the positive terminal of my battery is connected to the anode and the negative terminal to the cathode. And uh, for a reverse bias, we have something like this. So same diode this time. The polarity of the battery is changed. Okay, so this is pretty much the review of all we talked about uh, about PN junction and the diodes and everything. Uh, it makes us ready to move on to circuits analysis using diodes. But before that, we have to have a couple of small discussions on the diodes and diode models before actually starting our circuit analysis.